All right, guys, we are got a, an update on the Jeep, and we're getting ready to start filming part of this guy, which is the 06 Chevy uh, Cummins build. Um, but back to the, the Jeep pickup. So, let's see if I can see. Oh, I might have messed up the focus a little bit. I don't know what I did. I'm not a cameraman. God, I'm terrible at this. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. I got stuff coming off. I think I got too big of a camera to do this job. So, um, I got the interior, inside of the frame all ground out. Got the, uh, there was some, some ugly welded pieces in there. I uh, used a weld through primer, rust stop sealer to, to keep from rusting. Um, and now I cut out a couple of pieces over here um, out of our plate. Um, I used, believe it or not, a skill saw. Uh, maybe that's not far-fetched to you guys, but in all the fabrication steel experience I have, I have never used this steel blade, which provides a superior cut. I just don't know how long it's going to last. Um, got our pieces cut anyway. Uh, they're over here. Yeah. Here's two of the pieces. There's one, I should say. And this is my plan. And what I've decided to, to do, I've drawn on here some pretty drawings for you. See if you guys can see them. Move this around here. So, you can kind of see my idea. Used a, a cool whip lid to do this. I'm going to cut, this is going to be the, the little scallops that I'm cutting out of here. Um, are Look at the whole thing. We got some painted areas on here, no big deal. You gotta get this off, it's pretty clean, but I am gonna scallop this one instead of doing a solid plate on the inside of my C channel like this. Um, so I can utilize the inside of the frame to run and hide my wires and my plumbing. Because um, this thing's gonna be for pretty much off-road use and Farm and ranch words, you know, a little bit of running the town to get feed and stuff like that. So it will be on road as well, but uh, I don't want any lines, be it a fuel line, electrical wires, to be on just the inside so a stick could come up and, and potentially tear them. So this is, this is a kind of a new idea. Um, and what I did to do this is, like I said, I used a cool whip lid. Through my marks, um, I'm gonna come in with a plasma and cut these. But I needed a template, so I cut this this first one out with a with a jigsaw, believe it or not, which works. Um, but it by no means is efficient or any way I would recommend doing it. But it's a a template that I can lay in here. You know, 3 sixteenths of an inch off, so it gets up to the tip of my plasma, and I can just come around, cut it smooth, and make it a clean cut. So, let me get this one cut out. I'll see you in a minute. Alright, we got all pieces all cut out. Um, so you can kind of see the, the shape of what our our box is going to end up looking like, you know, if you can picture a, a C-channel with this on the inside. Um, I think it's going to look pretty good. Um, now, that 45 I was talking about, we will cut it off and I will display 
that that scary device. Um, remember when I said you need a face shield? Um, I don't have one. Still don't have one. I got I got safety glasses, so we're gonna, we're gonna put those on and we just toughen this one out, and hopefully we don't have too many too many pieces stick to my face. And, uh, if we do, you get to you get to see me bleep out some some tough words because they don't feel good. They don't feel good at all. What's funny is uh, my family knows. I don't. You know, I got all these machines. I have plasma cutters, torches, lathes, mills, drills, blah blah blah. I could I could go on for forever, and I don't have a face shield. Um, my family knows safety has never been my main concern. Uh, my aunt Deb, she's watching this. Uh, the first words that came out of her her mouth right now is dumbass. Um, I get it. Um, I'm getting better about I'm wearing safety glasses. I've taken the, the next step, you know, kind of like you know, the people in AA or Hey, they're, they're going to the meetings, they're, they're working on their sobriety. Well, I'm, I'm working on my safety, um, just one step at a time, right? So, well, I was working on my safety. I don't know what I do with my safety glasses now. It's the only pair I own. Got them, guys. Once again, lay them down. They're not important. So. One step at a time. One step at a time. All right. Well, this thing is terrifying. Coming from a guy who never put safety first. I don't even know if you can see that. But those guys are hot and sharp. All right. I will knock the dross off the back side of the, the steel. And the hammer. our flat disc to kind of clean those up, clean our edges where, because where I cut it with the steel saw, uh, it leaves a real sharp edge. Uh, you just use a flat disc and you clean all that stuff up. So. We got her all sanded down and, and ready to go over to the chassis table and see see how she fits. This is what it's going to look like. As you can see, I've, I've already been over here fine tuning this one to to get it to fit. Um, we have a, a bend right here. Um, and I will show you that, what we did there. Um, but before I tack this on here, 
I will paint the inner side and sand all of this off, all this mill scale off. I don't know if you can see it. So I will sand all this mill scale off to so it welds better when I come back and weld. And I will prime the inside with some primer. Like I, like I did here, it's a sealer primer and stops rust. Um, even though when I come back and weld, there's a lot of it's going to burn, some of it's going to burn off. Um, but the majority of it will stay in there and, and protect it and keep it from rusting. So, all right, let's see if we can make this fit. See how well it's going to fit. Well, looks like this side of the frame is going to need a little fine tuning, which is all right. Um, boy, that bend, there's a bend up there, and a bend down here. So, you got a bend here and here. Alright, so basically I'm just going to push on this thing here and beat on it with a hammer to kind of give it a little slow roll so it fits our frame. So, took our hammer, just kind of bent it over so it's, there you go, maybe you can see, to, see there's a bend here and a bend down here, and I'm hoping this fits, or at least gets us closer. Guys, close enough, we can, we can, once we, we start tacking it in, we can uh, bend and, and tweak out what we need to tweak. Uh, looks like there's some, some bending that's got to happen down there as well. So. All right, so I got it bent and put in a little bit different. So I still got to do a little massaging here and there. Um, but that little bump in the frame falls in a hole so it doesn't cause me to have to re-bend that frame and straighten it out. So, but before I can do that, I have to Grind all this mill scale off where I'm going to weld here on my flat pieces. Bevel this edge and bevel the other edge. And to kind of come back around to, I mentioned earlier, why you shouldn't, why you shouldn't weld vertical. So, we'll grab these. Them up on here. So if you put these together, if this is your frame here and here, and you weld all the way around right here, it's obviously stronger than my hand, but my hand pretend it's the weld. This, this, that's as straight as I can hold it. I'll try again, but I'm pretty sure that's as straight. That's it. So. It doesn't take much, a little pressure out here, the back end of the frame, the front end of the frame, um, or just going down the road and doing this, that weld's going to break. It's going to, it's going to, there's just too much leverage there. But if you were to weld it this direction, it's similar to this. 
Now my hand is the weld that's holding the two pieces together. You can obviously see I can hold it straight with minimal um, pressure. And a weld is obviously thousands of times stronger than me, but uh, if you weld, it's, it's trying to pull the weld apart like this versus tear the weld with leverage. It's kind of like taking a piece of paper and you tear it, works fine. We'll take that same piece of paper and try to pull it apart. It takes a whole bunch more, more power and it's a stronger, stronger repair. So anyways, let's uh, make sure I do the right side here. Get onto this. And I would remove, I have a much better way to remove mill scale than you know, our rusty trusty. Everybody knows the flat disc and a grinder will remove it. But I have a much, much better way to remove it, especially for you TIG welders, um, than doing it this way. I just can't do it because these pieces are too big. So I will come back on another video um, when we get further down and we do some of the, the smaller pieces. I don't know if my next piece I'll do it in two pieces or just one piece to meet up with this on our boxing or frame. But where I'm welding vertical here, I'll have to come back in and put a little diamond that goes over this seam to reinforce that seam to keep it from cracking. So the downside to that is if you have something that's mounted, right now I don't know where anything's going to mount. Um, I'm hoping this stays out of the way. If you have a, a transmission mount or some other mount, it's, it's going to be funky. Um, it's, gonna, it's not going to allow you to, you know, match up flush with your, your frame rails. So, all right, we're back. I got this piece that the paint has dried enough to where it's not going to get all over my hands. And we'll get this tacked in and see what we can do here. So, what happens? Looks like that one's going to hit a little bit. We can, we can adjust. There we go. Better that time. Now, we need. That's obviously going to have to come down. That one looks pretty fair. So, everything fits pretty well. Um, I'm going to have to come back in with a hammer and, and fine tune this because this frame kind of, it's got some swells and some, some uneven areas. Um, but we'll get her, I'm going to go ahead and put that one in. kind of how it's going to look. Kind of gives it a, a cool look, I guess. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, we, may, we may do something different on the next one. Um, but I kind of like the, the little scalloped look. Like I said, it'll give me room to come in here and, and put my running wires and, and fuel lines or, or whatever to keep it out of harm's way when I take this thing off-road and hang it up on a rock or drive through a tree or try to drive up a tree, who knows. 
Um, so, yeah, I'll finish getting this tacked in. And all right, guys, I'm back. I got it all finished, tacked in. Um, and I will continue, I'll tack the other side in, and then we'll move on to fabricating back here, which goes down, back up. Uh, it's gonna be kind of ugly, but a little more, a little more in depth on fabricating that stuff. Um, these were the easy two, but I'm on the fence whether I like it or dislike it. I think I... Because I have another build coming. I mean, we're, we're going to do this exact same thing that's just right around the corner when I start this. And I don't know if this is what I want. I'm undecided. Um, and not so much from a, a structural standpoint because yeah, it's plenty strong. Or it will be once I weld it in. Um, but from an aesthetic standpoint, is there any possible ideas um please throw them out um yay or nay do you like how this looks or would you rather have a different design or a different way of doing it um i don't know you tell me um just throw your throw your dirty remarks down in the comments if you don't like it uh if you do like it uh, I'd like to hear that as well, but um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of on the fence. I mean, I like it, but at the same time, I'm not sure. It it does look kind of funny. So, huh? I don't know. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe. Uh, definitely throw some comments in. Uh, I seen I had some new new subscribers uh, from other. Uh, car builders um if you guys see this please say something and if you have done something different um yeah i, I want to hear it um it's like i said I'm, I'm really undecided on on whether this this is pleasing enough for me so all right guys well i'll catch you on the next video like subscribe ring the bell